OK, so we're going to be looking now at where you can do some adding and subtracting with your volumes to come up with more complex looking shapes like this. So suppose we wanted to revolve the following area around the x axis. What strategy might we use to find the volume of this resulting solid? So when this revolves around the axis, you're going to get this kind of shape that's going to have all of these bits sort of made 3D. And then there's this kind of shape here that I'm going to do in like a red color that looks like it's actually been removed from the overall shape. And this shape that's been removed here is a cone. And so the way you'd probably go about doing this one is you would work out the volume of the blue section. And then you would subtract the volume. I should really call this the volume of revolution. You would do the volume of revolution of the top curve, subtract the area, sorry, the volume of the cone. So a couple of reminders of stuff from GCSE. Um, first of all, I want to remind you of the formula of how you find the volume of a cone. And this is something that you need to commit to memory. So the volume is a third pi r squared h. And actually, for any of these kind of pyramid shapes, it's always a third times by the base times by the height. But in this particular context we're looking at here, it's always going to be a circular base because of the way that it rotates as volumes of revolution. And when we do these questions, obviously, the our cones are going to be on their side. So when we're talking about h, we're talking about this. And when we're talking about the radius, we're actually talking about the y coordinate that we've got there. Also, you need to know the formula for the volume of a cylinder, which is pretty easy. It's just pi r squared h. So it's just the area of the bottom multiplied by the height. So let's have a go at this question that we've got here. It says the region R is bounded by the curve with equation y equals x, square, x cubed plus 2, the line y equals 5 minus 2x, and the x and y axes. So you can see the bit that I'm talking about, here are the x and y axes that we have. Um, by the line, y is 5 minus 2x and the curve that we've got here. We're going to look about the volume in just a second, but the first thing that we're going to do is verify that the coordinates of A are 1, 3. So to verify that, we just need to see that 1, 3 will satisfy both of these equations because that's where they share a point. So for 1, 3, if I test it with the first one, we would have Y equals, well, the X coordinate is 1 cubed plus 2, which is just 3. So we can say, so A is on Y equals X cubed plus 2. And then for our other one, we've got Y equals 5 minus 2X, which is going to be 5 minus 2 times 1, which is 3. So A is on Y equals 5 minus 2X. Hence, A is the intersection. And now we're going to get on to the interesting part of the question. It says that a solid is created by rotating the region 360 degrees. Sometimes they might say two pi radians about the x axis. And we want to find the volume of this solid. Well, I know that the a coordinate is 1, 3. So I know that this bit down here is 1. Well, if you think about how this is going to rotate, I'm just going to move this a second so that I can do some of the rotation. If you think about how this is going to rotate this solid, it's going to kind of come like this kind of shape. And as it splits into these two bits, when it becomes into a solid shape, we've got a cone and another part. So this bit is going to produce a cone. This bit is going to be a volume of revolution. So I'm going to start off by doing the easy part and try and find out what the cone is. So I think I need to find out what this coordinate here is. Well, that's pretty easy to do because we know that the y coordinate is um, the y coordinate is zero there. So x is going to be equal to five over two. So let's think about that cone for a second. For the cone that we have there, the radius is going to be this part. And that radius, think to yourself what that should be, that radius is going to be the y coordinate of A, which is 3. The height of this cone is going to be from here to here. Well, if this is 5 over 2, we know this coordinate is 1. 
So 5 over 2 minus 1 is 3 over 2. So the height is 3 over 2. So the volume of that cone is going to be a third pi r squared h, which is a third times pi times 9 times 3 over 2. So I'm just going to do uh, a third multiplied by 9 multiplied by 3 over 2, which is 9 over 2 pi. Now what I'm going to do is find the volume of that first section. So the volume of that first section, if I call this one R1 and this one R2, we were dealing with R2 here, now we're going to deal with R1. We know that the volume is going to be equal to pi y squared dx. And it's going to be between 0 and 1. Well, the curve that we're integrating underneath is this curve, not the other one. The straight line created the curve, sorry, the cone. The curve here is going to create this bit. So I'm going to be doing it to x cubed plus 2 squared. So it's going to be equal to pi. y squared will be x cubed plus 2 all squared dx. So that's going to be x to the power of 6 plus 4x cubed plus 4 dx. And I'm going to come up here so that I have some more space. So I'm actually going to just go straight in and integrate that. It's going to be a 7th x to the 7 plus x to the 4 plus 4x between 0 and 1. Well, when I put 1 in, I'm just going to get a 7th plus 1 plus 4. And when I put 0 into that expression, that's going to be 0, that's going to be 0, and that's going to be 0. So that we get the volume is just a 7th plus 1 plus 4. So a 7th plus 5, which is 36 over 7 pi. So the total volume is going to be the 36 over 7 pi plus the volume of the cone, which was 9 over 2 pi. So I'll do 36 over 7 plus 9 over 2, and we get 135 over 14 pi. So that first strategy that we did there was splitting it into two different regions. We did the first region that was this kind of cone shape here, which was all done in this working out. And then we did the second region, which was this section, which all gave us this bit over here. And then the total volume, when you put them together, obviously we just add those two pieces to come up with this. So that was one with an adding bit. Let's have a look at another one. This time there's going to be subtraction. Now, these are going to work in the same way as what you would do in um, integration. If you wanted to find the area between two curves, you do the top curve minus the bottom curve. And you just integrate that. If you wanted to, you could do them separately. But because they're going to have the same limits, you can just integrate them as one whole combined expression like this. And it's just going to be the exact same thing for volumes of revolution. So the diagram shows the region R bounded by the curves with equations y equals root x and y equals 1 over 8x and the line x equals 1. The region is rotated 360 degrees about the x-axis. Find the exact volume of the solid generated. So this one's kind of hard to imagine, but when this thing here rotates, it's actually going to rotate down to the bottom bit as well. This bit's going to be really hard to draw, so I'm not going to try it, but it's going to create like a a weird shape, like a ring, basically. It's going to have a hole in the middle because of this section here that's going to be completely empty. So let's get rid of some of that. Well, I need to know the limits. I know that the upper limit is 1, but I need to know what this limit down here is. So have a little think to yourself. How would you find that? The way you're going to find that is by solving those equations simultaneously. So the intersection point... we're going to solve them simultaneously.
So I get 1 over 8x equals the square root of x. So I'm going to multiply both sides by x. So that's x to the half multiplied by x. In other words, 1 eighth equals x to the 3 over 2. So I could do an eighth to the 2 over 3 to find out what x is. I can do that in my head because I know the cube root of an eighth is a half and a half squared is a quarter. But I'm just going to show you that on the calculator. But if I do an eighth to the power of two thirds, you get a quarter. So that means this coordinate is a quarter. So I'm now going to find out what the volume is. The volume is going to be pi between a quarter and one. Now it's going to be the top one squared minus the bottom one squared. And we can do this as one long integration. So the top one squared is going to be root x all squared, which is just x. And the bottom one squared, which is going to be subtracted, is going to be 1 over 64x squared dx. So I did the top curve subtract the bottom curve and I squared them because of the fact that we're doing it with um, volumes of revolution. So I'm going to rewrite this to make it a bit easier to do the integration. It's just going to be x minus 1 over 64, leave the 64 in the denominator, x to the minus 2 dx. I'm now going to do the integration. So I get a half x squared going to increase the power of that to a minus 1, and then I'm going to change it to a 1 over 64, and that's going to be between a quarter and 1. So when I substitute in 1, it's going to be nice and easy. I'm just going to have a half plus 1 over 64, and then when I sub in a quarter, I'm going to have a half times by a quarter squared, which is a sixteenth, plus 1 over 64 times a quarter to the minus 1. Well, the reciprocal of a quarter is just going to be 4, like this. So I might add in a little blank page here. Hopefully you've got enough space on your booklet. I probably can squeeze this in because I don't really need to go to this bit here. So I'm just going to put some of this in my calculator. I'm going to do a half plus 64, 1 over 64, sorry. So that's 33 over 64, and I'm going to minus, that's going to be 1 over 32 plus 4 over 64. 1 over 32 plus 4 over 64, which is 3 over 32. So I'm going to do 33 over 64 minus 3 over 32, which is 27 over 64. 27 over 64 pi. So. What we've come up with here is just showing that you can do it with subtracting. If you really wanted to, you could have done the top volume, which is the green bit, which is this bit here, with those limits. And then you could do the bottom volume like this, which are these bits here. And you could have subtracted them afterwards. I just did it all as one thing because you can do it all as one thing like this bit. So I didn't need that extra page in the end. Okay, there's one here that you might like to have a go at yourself and then check if you get the same answer as me. But I'm gonna go through this one now. So this one, it says, the area between the lines with equations y equals x and y equals the cube root of x, where x is greater than zero, is rotated 360 degrees about the x-axis. Determine the volume of the solid generated. So, you could do this previous technique of doing the top curve minus the bottom curve, or we could notice that there is going to be a cone that is created. I think that underneath this y equals x line, when it gets rotated, there is going to be a cone that is inside that can be, that can be subtracted. So I'm going to find out the volume of the cone that I'm going to subtract first of all. Now, the volume of the cone is a third pi r squared h, which is a third pi. Well, oh, we actually don't even know where they're intersecting up here. So hold up on this. Let's just move that down a second. 
and let's find out where they intersect. So we're going to do the simultaneous equations first of all to find out where they intersect each other. So we've got that x equals x cubed root. So I could cube both sides, so I get x cubed equals x. So that's x cubed minus x equals 0. I'm just going to keep solving this. I can factor out an x, so that's x squared minus 1. And that's a difference of two squares, so that's x plus 1, x minus 1. Meaning that these curves are going to cross at x equals 0, minus 1, or 1. So hopefully just through common sense we can see that this value here is going to be 1. Now let's get back to what we were talking about here. We're going to find the volume of the cone. So the volume of the cone is a third pi r squared h. Well, the radius of the cone is going to be from here to here. Well, we know that the x coordinate is 1. And because this curve, sorry, this line is y equals x, well, the y coordinate must also be 1 because it's y equals x. Or you could have said it's y equals the cube root of 1. So the radius is 1. And the height, well, the height of the cone is from here to here, which is just going to be 1 as well. So we have a third pi. Now all I need to do is find the volume underneath this bit that we've got here. So we're going to say that volume equals pi y squared dx. And we're going to be doing it between 0 and 1. And in this case, because y is equal to x to the third, we know that y squared is going to be x to the two thirds. So it's going to be a nice easy one. So it's going to be the integral between 0 and 1 of x to the 2 thirds dx. So I'm going to increase that power to 5 over 3 and multiply by 3 fifths between 0 and 1. Well, when I sub in 1, I'm just going to get 3 fifths pi. And when I sub in 0, that's not going to be there at all. So the volume is going to be equal to, remember it's the first one, the big one that we calculated here, that's the whole section, subtract the volume of the cone, which is 3 fifths pi minus a third pi. So all I'm going to do is 3 fifths minus a third, which is 4 fifteenths pi. And so 4 fifteenths pi um, is the volume of that section. So I would not ask you to follow any one method here. I'd ask you to think really carefully before you do exercise 5C. We did three examples. We did one where you had to add together a volume of revolution and a cone. We did another one where you had to subtract the top volume and the bottom volume. And I was able to do it as one expression that we had here. I couldn't do anything with a cone because both of these lines were curved. As soon as you have a straight line, like in this one here, you can bring in that idea of a cone because it's just going to be so much quicker than doing integration. It would work with integration, but it's just going to be easier to do it with that cone formula. And this was an example of a subtraction where we did the top part and we removed that cone. In fact, it looks pretty similar in some ways to this kind of idea of removing that red cone from it. So that's enough to help you to do exercise 5C now. Um, good luck with it.